Yeah, so let's do this thing. So how this works. Uh, five tiers. S, A, B, C, D. So explain that. I, I get A, B, C, D. So does, has nobody ever like... Uh, is, I guess I only know this through video games. If you, like the top score was always like an S rank. I don't know why. S is always... Maybe it's answer special. Su- superior. Superior. Okay. superior. I mean, that's what I'm okay, so then what's... Super, what's, superb. What's, what's A stands spectacular. for? Spectacular. Awesome. B. Yeah. Best. Or no. C. Uh, C uh, cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of with a C. Yeah. Kind, um, yeah, kind D. Of with a C. Dumb. Dumb. E. Uh, there's no E. D. Dumb. Like All right, she said. Let's go. Okay, here we go. So here are our tier list. We have 14 quarterbacks. I, I think we work our way top to bottom. Um, top to bottom. Who automatically gets in the S tier? Kyle Trask. To me, that's is the only one that I maybe could put. the only one that's a guarantee. That's the only one I got. You don't think Mac Jones? Maybe no. I, to be in the S list, you have to be proven. Okay. Right? That's fair. That's fair. I mean, you you can't say potentially he's an S player. Yeah. Right. And and Mac Jones stats are unbelievable, but because potentially Miles Brennan could be an S player. Yes, that is true. That is true. It's it's just that it's just that Mac Jones Mac Jones sixty nine completion percentage last year, fifteen hundred yards, fourteen touchdowns, three picks, but. A lot of that success did come against lesser teams, and when he did run up against a better team, he struggled. Although the the game against Auburn's weird, right? Because even Auburn made Joe Burrow look a bit human, and and although he had some bad moments, he had some good moments. Um, but that's fair. You're right. I, I don't think you'd throw him in the S tier. Uh, the only other guy on this list that maybe I could potentially. By the way, we got Miles Brennan for LSU, Mac Jones for Bama, Kyle Trask, Florida, Terry Wilson, Kentucky, Bo Nix, Auburn, Kellen Mond, and M. Ryan Helensky, South Carolina. And and then like some lesser names, but what about KJ Costello at Mississippi State? And the only reason I say this, yes, he was hurt last year, ends up transferring for Stanford. But if you look at his 2018 numbers, these are S tier type of numbers. He completed 65 percent of his passes, 3,500 yards, 29 touchdowns, 11 picks. And now you 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 team him up with Mike Leach, and and his throw it around like he's gonna put up numbers. I'm I'm willing to put. KJ Costello, I'm not willing to do it. I, yes. Okay, you're right. I was about to Never say. Mind. Let's move on to I was about to, to say, that's a bold move right there, man. I mean, because look, r- r- real quick, I love the numbers on Costello. Yeah. Um, But Pac-12 versus SEC, and I think you'll be that's able to fair. tell within the first six weeks if he's an S player. The thing is, yeah, but you know he's going to do numbers, like just because of Mike Leach and that offense. But that's fine. He's not it. So Kyle Trask alone. Atop the uh, atop our SEC tier list. Okay, let's get to the A tier then. Um, I would put KJ Costello in here for sure. I would put Bo Nix first. Oh, okay. on this list. Okay, and you know what's kind of funny? We didn't talk about this beforehand. I'm in agreement with you. I think that we're higher though on Bo Nix than than most people may be. I think Bo Nix should feel a little disrespected that we never brought his name up one time in the S column. I uh, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We didn't even debate it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't. Th- I mean, I, I think I think putting him in the A is already giving him too much the benefit credit? of the doubt. Maybe okay. not. Maybe not too much credit, but just the benefit of the doubt. I, I like a lot about Bo Nix. Mm-hmm. He got put in a crazy position last year, having to start as a true freshman. He made some big time plays. Obviously, the Oregon game stands out a lot there. And, and yes, he struggled, but overall, like the numbers speak to a lot of potential. And this is just through the air. This is even taking into account how he can run, but he threw for 2,500 yards, 16 touchdowns, six picks. That's pretty good. True freshman, man. Um, True the, yeah. freshman. The thing that needs to improve is the completion percentage, but as you said, I think that's just a natural extension of true freshman. And then if we're talking about coaches, Chad Morris with him. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm with you. Bo Nix, solidly in the A category. Uh, you so Are you cool with putting KJ Costello in there? Yeah, I'll put him there. Um, what about the only? What about Mac Jones here? I'm okay with Mac Jones here, um, but I am not as sold on Mac Jones yet as being a every down, every play, season quarterback at that level. So to me, there are still unanswered questions. I'm okay putting him in the A column because of what he has proven and because of the talent around him. Uh, I am I am a little less the talent around him obviously will help a lot. That's a good point. I am a little less secure than I am uh, in putting Bo Nix in this category with, uh, with 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 when you're talking about uh, when you're talking about Bama's quarterback in uh, in Mac Jones. Okay, the last name that I think could potentially be a tier here, uh, Kellen Mond. 
Mm-hmm. What do you think? I don't. A huge down year last year. And I for think sure. that he continues to slide. I, mm. I just I'm just not sold on Mond his his talent. Like I, I see that he makes a throw every now and again. Yeah. I see that he makes the right read every now and then, but he's not consistent enough for me. And for whatever reason, I was high on Jimbo a couple of years back. To me, his his brand has become so stale and I, I just don't I don't I don't trust that he can make him an elite player. So all right, um, let's, but I, I agree. You've convinced me. Let's okay. So Kellen Mond not in the A. So I, I think the A category is done with Mac Jones and Costello. Let's get into that B category. I think Mond definitely deserves to be in the B category. I got no, pro- I got no problem with with Mond in the in the in the B category. As you talk about uh, being able to get a return there, uh, I, I think that this fits in perfectly. I'm going to throw uh, Jared Guarantano okay. in the in the B category as well. Um, in terms of quarterback rating last year, if you look, and you had to qualify by playing like 75% of your team's game, so Mac Jones didn't come into it. But he was third in the SEC behind Trask and Burrow, and it's not like his numbers were incredible by any stretch. 59% completion, 16 touchdowns, 8 picks, 2,100 yards. Like, There's a lot of room for improvement there, but that's a Tennessee team that faced the darkest of times, Mm -hmm. losing to Georgia State at home. And managed to recover, managed to keep it on the tracks. He's going to be an upperclassman. Um, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I, I could get convinced that Gorontano might be okay this year. So I'll put him there. Um, I think this is probably where. Okay, here we'll go next. What about Felipe Franks? Uh, B tier. I, I think Felipe Franks is D tier. Oh, whoa! I think whoa. Felipe Franks whoa. is. I, I, I mean, without got, being overly critical good numbers. to a college student athlete. I think Felipe Franks is terrible. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't let me mince my words here. I just, I don't think you can win anything with Felipe Franks. Yeah. I mean, to see the improvement that that Florida offense made by one simple change at the quarterback spot, for as much as we lauded Dan Mullen and his ability to evaluate and develop quarterbacks, he couldn't see that Kyle Trask was that much better than Felipe Franks. Mm, mm, it's a bit odd. Uh, but but Frank's had a pretty good 2018, dude. I mean, mm. he had 24 touchdowns, six picks. Completion percentage wasn't great, about 2,500 yards. Um, I, I can't go D. I'm okay with putting Frank's in the C tier, though. Um, what do we do with Miles Brennan? B or C? He's completely unproven. If you look on this list, so far we've ranked everybody that has playing time. I guess Mac Jones, we pretty much gave the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. So Brendan's a little similar to him. I, mean, I guess you could put like Halinski in in this category. You know, he's you put Halinski in the B. I don't know if I'm or I don't know if I'm convinced. So uh, have we moved off of B? No, we haven't moved. I'm saying, does Miles Brennan fit in the B or the C? Not yet, because he goes against what what my theory was early on. You can't put potential out there. But we kind of did with Mac. We put him in the A. On some potential, but you got some data on Mac. You, you got more you know, data. He's got than he's got Brennan. more starts. He's played complete games. You've seen him at, over longer stretches. I, I'm not. Look, I, I would put this on Miles Brennan's evaluation. I would say that he is in the C tier because you just don't have enough data and film to break down mm-hmm. on him. But potentially, this guy could be an S player by the end of the season. No doubt, no doubt. Um, the only reason I'm cool with putting him in B is. I think as we're going to see when we get to the C tier, I think there's like a clear line of demarcation where, I mean, the other quarterbacks we got left to rank, you're Just talking about off. Terry Wilson, like you said, Ryan Holinsky, Mizzou has a transfer from TCU, Sean Robinson, who's all right. Uh, Vanderbilt has a true freshman, Ken Seals, who I think is lined up to start there. Maybe Terry Wilson at Mentioned Kentucky. He was Ken- you know who's a wild card on this list is is John Rice Plumley, uh, Plumley. Yeah, but then, but then again, they have two quarterbacks. Right? Yeah. They have Corral and Plumley. Like who, who ends up getting that job? And obviously, Plumley stands out in LSU fans. I, so for that reason, I'm actually cool with putting Miles in a B, because the same way that we said that the talent around Mac Jones is going to help that a lot. I saw enough from Brennan last year. Um, Lee, like when he got in the game, I love the yards per attempt, eight point eight. It's that's the the key quarterback stat to focus on, and that means that he when he got in there, he was not afraid to sling it. I expect that to improve, and then you're going to give that guy Jamar Chase and Eric Gilbert and all these weapons. I'm okay with Brennan finishing off our B tier. Look, I I could be sold because of what what you claim and and, and the 
the the argument that you make by laying out his numbers when he does get in there. He's very impressive. You know the arm strength, and then when you look at the talent around him, I mean, you got Jamar Chase, Terrace Marshall, Eric Gilbert, Racy McMath. You got running backs coming out of the backfield, uh, and he understands the situation that he's stepping into. He understands yeah. the scheme. And, and and the anecdotal return on him is really good early on. Oh, uh, we missed a big one, Jamie Newman, UGA transferring from Wake Forest. Before I get into it, I, I was pretty shocked to learn this. You look at his numbers last year, good numbers. 61% of his passes complete, 2,800 yards, 26 TDs, 11 picks. Mm -hmm. So about a 2.5 to 1 ratio. That's really solid. What's odd, Jordy, is that those numbers are almost identical to Jake Fromm. Eight yards, 0.1 percentage point separate them in those two categories. And then Jake Fromm threw 24 touchdowns to five picks. So it's like, it's kind of interesting, right? Because everybody's expecting this huge upgrade from Georgia at that position. But here you have a guy who in the ACC put up basically the same numbers. And where Jamie Newman breaks down a little more for me at Georgia is I don't know that I'm in love with their skill positions. It was a huge weakness last year and they dealt with injuries and whatnot. Absolutely. But Jamie Newman, what do you think? A, B, not S, but I think he belongs in the A or the B. Really? Uh, I would put him in B if those were my two choices, just because I would like to see that at the SEC level also. When you're giving me numbers like 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 Fromm is producing uh, in the ACC, yeah. and you're coming over to the SEC and you want to run that same scheme and you're talking about the, the, the collection of talent around him not being as impressive as, as what you would say even at, like at Mississippi State or Tennessee. Yeah. You know what I mean? Forget LSU, Alabama. Um, I, I would have to see it first. And then T, like JT Daniels. There's a lot of, there's a lot of whispers that he's going to be eligible. Oh, really? You know, on, on a waiver. And if that happens, I don't know if they're trying to, if they're trying to make amends for the mistake they made. For Justin Fields. For, for running off Justin Fields and keeping from. Yeah. You know, I mean, Fields is going to win the Heisman this year. Fromm's going to be looking for work. <laughs> That's a fair point. Okay, so for now, I, I think I'm going to we, – we'll stick Jamie Newman in that B tier. Uh, then we get to C tier. Um, that's probably where I would put Felipe Franks. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I can go full D on him. Um, I'll throw Terry Wilson Yeah, in that C tier. He's hurt last Coming year. Coming back from injury. Yeah, he, he had some potential flashed in 2018. And then after that, I think everybody else. No, I'll, I'll put Ryan Halinski in C tier as well. Uh, some nice moments of a freshman year for Halinski over there at South Carolina. And then you get into your other guys who... Your freshman, Ken Seals. Yeah, Ken Seals. Don't know much about him. Um, and then I'll put both the Ole Miss guys down there. Uh, John Rice Plumley and Matt Corral. It will be interesting to see Lane Kiffin call in plays for these guys. Yeah. I mean, he's got, he's got a couple of... You know, I mean, Plumley's a wild card. Corral could throw it a little bit better. You know what I mean? Threw for over 1,300 yards with nearly a 60% completion rate. So um, it'll be interesting to see how Lane Kiffin fits around those two guys as far as being, you know, the the, the genius mind in his play calling. All right, there they are. There they are. We the, want uh, one more. Uh, Sean Robinson from, just for yeah. posterity, for, from Mizzou. Uh, the transfer from TCU. I honestly don't know much about him. The numbers aren't anything too impressive. So we'll just roll with D tier for now. But uh, potential mover there.